I feel at home in a saddle Where hills are sloping, I'm loping and roping the whole day through On a thin floor or a strawberry road I've got a song, so how can I be alone? alone. I feel at home Tell the crowd good love that I'm proud I'm a buckaroo. Every day is filled with peaches and cream. Life is like a beautiful prairie dream. I've got a horse that knows his way. He never goes wrong. I've got a heart that I can't stop from singing when I go. I feel at home in a saddle Where hills are sloping, I'm loping and roping the whole day through On a pinto or a strawberry road I've got a song, so how can I be alone? Alone I feel at home in a saddle I'll tell the crowd good luck I'm proud I'm a buckaroo Every day is filled with peaches and cream Life is like a beautiful prairie dream Sweet dream I've got a horse that knows his way He never goes wrong I've got a heart that I can't stop From singing when I go swinging along I feel at home in the saddle. Just let me ride high and wide on the side of a western hill. If it's rainy or a beautiful day, I'm happy cause I'm riding my cares away. Martin girl, she's coming this way. was holding out. I rode into Silver Creek after two weeks in the saddle to find that the silver strike had just about petered out. <laughs> there I was at the end of my stake, hoping to make another, and there weren't no silver left. <laughs> so you settle down to be a successful rancher. I'm thinking it's a lucky strike for you, Ken. I've had to work ever since. Don't forget that, Andy. Back more. I bet you my life I never before see people eat so much when I so hungry. Ah. Yeah, 
Little more chow, Mike. I still say that you're the best cook around these parts. How about some more chuck, Mike? These roundup sure give a fellow great appetite. I'm so hungry I'm gonna fall down. I drink to open air from the outside for eight hours. <laughs> I hungry like anything. I bring the food up to my nose, almost. My stomach, she sing. And then somebody more come to be fed. There. There it is now. Everything. I make myself starve from little pieces. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by golly, I get my, my eat. I can get my drink all day long. <laughs> <laughs> you know one thing I like about your chuck wagon? It's always good food. That's the reason I come over to help you. Yeah, well, Mike's a good cook. Oh, you betcha. Boys are all through eating, boss. Shall we go on with Brandon? All right, Wiley. We're coming right up. Tim, that comes from good grazing land and water. Looks like your daughter coming. Oh, Dad. Oh, Hello, Andy. Charlie. They've closed the gates of the dam. What? When did this happen, Charlie? I've just been up there. It's already stopping the flow of the river. Then what about water for our cattle? Well, we won't have any. We should have stopped Waylon and his crowd from building that dam. I'll go in and see what can be done about it. Maybe it's like you say, Mr. Whalen. There may still be ore in this section, but you can't use any means you like to get it out. You can't wreck people who built their homes here, who've lived here all their lives, just to suit your own ends. I have to run my business as I see fit. But by cutting the river with this dam you built, you turn all our grazing lands into a desert. Why, well, it'll ruin every one of us. I have to take care of my own problems. You'll have to take care of yours. Well, I'll warn you now, Waylon. If you insist on blocking off our water, you can look for trouble. I'll be ready for it.
doing, Mike? Oh, I like to go for the chop down this dam. It's break my heart to see this beef not drinking. Uh, you can't do that. You'll be shot. Uh, who tried to shot me? <laughs> I chop him down like cherry tree. It's no right for him to stop this water and mountain. Why... Why he do this? I think I can answer that. What did you find out, Charlie? I just found out why they built that dam. Why? They're using the water for gun pressure for hydraulic mining in Black Canyon. But that isn't the worst of it. The water doesn't even drain back into our valley. It runs off on the other side of the hills. Water wasted on a lot of sagebrush country. Well, what can we do about it? Whalen owns this mine property. The only thing we can do is go to court and fight Whalen. Yeah, you know how long that would take. By the time it's decided, there wouldn't none of us have any cattle left. Why you not let Mike go? I chop this dam down for little pieces. I make for you a new uh, Niagara Ni Ni farm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm afraid we couldn't let you go, Mike. What would we do for a cook? Cook? Cook. Oh, I forget. I got meat in the stove. If I let her burn, <laughs> I chop myself up. <laughs> I have an idea, Dad. In the morning, we could drive ours and Jurgen's herd through Owl Pass to the new water basin. But our land only runs to Owl Pass. Whalen's bought up all the land beyond that, including the pass. But it's the only way we can get them to water. All right, I'll ride over and tell Jurgen. Appears like I'll leave you a heap of trouble someday. Wiley! We're driving the cattle to Owl Pass in the morning. I've just herded them onto the flats, Miss Shirley. Now, you know there's no water there. We're taking them through the pass to the watershed. Well, that land belongs to Whelan. We can't come through there. Well, we're going to try. All right, Miss Shirley. Andy Jurgens will probably ride along with his cattle, too. Yes, ma'am. Looking for somebody, stranger? Why, yes, I'm looking for the foreman. I'm the foreman. Well, uh, say, your, your country's pretty dry. And did you just ride over to tell me that? Well, not exactly. I came in to see if you were taking on any hands. Well, the answer is no. No harm in asking. Say, uh, do you mind if I water my horse? All right. Right over there. Thanks. I'll send it for you. Thank you. Was there someone you wanted to see? Why, the foreman just asked me that same question. I told him I came in to see if you were putting on any new hands. And he said? Yeah, he said no. He sounded like he meant it. That's funny. He didn't ask me. As a matter of fact, we're planning a drive in the morning and we can use a couple of extra hands. You may stay if you like. Well, thank you, ma'am. I, uh, I take it you're the boss. Nope. My father is. I uh, still reckon you're the boss. You've heard what Wiley said. Now take several men and go to Owl Pass tonight. All right. I don't want the cattle to get near that water. Another three months, and every rancher in the valley will be ready to sell. At my price. Get going. Okay. Now, you know what to do with the cattle. I'll keep them headed away from the pass now, don't worry. Yes, because if they ever get a smell of that water and stampede through that pass, well, 
There won't be any of our boys left to tell about it. I'll handle the cattle. I thought I told you we didn't need any hands. Well, the boss figured there might be need for one or two in the morning. Well, if there's anybody needed on this outfit, I'll do the hiring. Say, I, I don't want to start in work by arguing with you. It'd be a lot nicer to be sort of friendly. Pack up and get up. Go on, get moving. Say, I, I wouldn't get tough if Go I... Go on, pack up your stuff. Wally. What's the reason for this rough stuff? You know father won't stand for it. As long as I'm foreman of this ranch, I'll do the hiring. You were the foreman, Wiley. I still am, and I'll settle that with your father. You won't need to. Not after you visit with Whalen this afternoon. What are you talking about? You know very well. We have no further use for you on this ranch. Go back to Whalen. He'll give you a job. Yes. And it'll be a job that you wish I didn't have. It'll be a pleasure for me to throw him off, ma'am. No. We don't want any fighting. <laughs> it's too bad none of you boys can sing. I uh, don't want to spoil my good playing by trying it myself. <laughs> <laughs> Nightingale stopped singing so they could listen to you. That's a pretty speech for a cowhand. Well, yeah. You get to know about nightingales and meadowlarks and such in between the times you're chasing longhorns. Well, anyway, thank you for the nice way you said it. <laughs> That's where I got you again. I do the thanking. First for the job and for the song. <laughs> Fix it if a fella just can't win an argument from you. <laughs> <laughs> well, your foreman almost did until you happened along. Undercover. When it comes through, let them have it.
Mr. Martin, him very bad work. There's no good time for a two guard meeting. I know, Mike. Maybe we could see Miss Shirley. She'll be out in a minute. How is Tim? I'm afraid he's pretty bad. Uh, boys, this is Bob Lawson, Tim's new foreman. Glad to know you. The boys are ready to band together with the range riders and hunt down this bunch. We shouldn't do that, Andy. We don't want any more bloodshed. I know your wives and children don't want you brought home like... like Dad was. We'll have to fight for our rights. There are other ways. We still have laws. We can't touch Whalen that way. We'll never find out if we don't try. Maybe Miss Martin's right. You can take this Whalen to court. I'll uh, be back in a minute and let you know how Tim is. I tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, sir, I feel. I do. You are one of the plaintiffs in this case against Robert Wylan? Yes, Your Honor. Proceed. Many years ago, my father came here. It was still a wild, undeveloped country. He made a home here. And for those who are in the court with me now, helped to build a community. Not long ago, he gave his life because he wanted to keep his home and help keep alive the community he'd helped to build. Objection. The testimony given is immaterial. Objection overruled. Proceed. Robert Whalen is depriving us of the means of livelihood upon which our existence here depends. Our cattle are being slowly destroyed for lack of water. Objection. The testimony given is irrelevant and immaterial. Overruled. Continue. Mr. Whalen's dam has cut off the entire water side of the valley. All our grazing lands have dried up. Our cattle are dying off. There is enough water for everyone. We haven't any wish to deprive Mr. Whalen of the right to do whatever he wishes on his property. But we do want him restrained from taking what is our inalienable right. Why, Silver Creek is as much a part of this valley as the soil and the grass and the trees. He's destroyed Silver Creek. We contend that is illegal. We aim to settle this peaceful. You know, Judge, the Americans who went through the hardships of settling the West are the kind who will fight for what belongs to them. Hey, hey, where are you going? You mean to tell me I can't see my boss? Not just now. This is a court of law. Okay, look, mister, please, I got troubles. I don't know nothing from court. All I know, I got to see Miss Shirley. And when I want to see somebody, I see somebody. Mike! Excuse me, mister, I must got to say something. Something has happened on the ranch. The fences are on the way. I don't understand. The fences, she go On the front of the fences is a big truck. She pull him ahead from him back. You mean someone in a big truck is tearing up our fences? That's just what I told you in too many words. Your Honor, I've just had the information that the same people who are stealing our water have now set out to destroy our property. This proceeding is irregular. I move for a dismissal. <coughs> Order in this court. Order. Quiet in this court. We must got to hurry to save fences. Maybe now is the house gone. This is an example of the methods used against the ranch owners in this valley. We demand immediate retraction of these unwarranted accusations. Everybody quiet in this court, please. Order. 
Miss Martin, that's a serious accusation. I'm going to prove it, Your Honor. I have seen this with my own eyes. I'm not a blind fool. And let me tell you something. This court's adjourned until tomorrow at 10 o'clock. This uh, court business could be settled immediately if uh, there are no witnesses to testify tomorrow. Oh, persuade him to be healthier for him to stay away. Well, you could try that. I got a way of talking to those cowherders that'll make them listen. Silver Creek County is now in session. Joseph Lester will take the stand. Ezra Gregory take the stand. Edgar Harlow to the stand. <coughs> Silas Childern. <coughs> in the absence of any complainants in this case, I move for a dismissal. It appears you have no witnesses to testify in this case. I'm afraid the case must be dismissed. Dismissed. I'm afraid it's no use protesting. The court has the right to decide. But there must be some reason for their absence, and I'm sure Whalen's behind it. First, we'll have to prove it. I said that's no way to fight him. Now we are late. Oh, no, we're not. First, we're going to make a call before we leave town. I'm going to get all the ranchers together and find out how we can fight this through. Have any more trouble from that crowd? I don't think we will either. <laughs> Are you sure to be true? I'm sorry things went against you, Miss Martin. You made sure of that. Well, you had your day in court. We've tried to settle this matter decently while you've gone about intimidating and murdering defenseless ranch owners. We're interested only in the protection of our property. You've tried to undermine us by buying off our people, as you did with Wiley. Well, you're through ranching around here, and you ought to know it. And if you don't quit, the same thing will happen to you that happened to your old man. Don't reach for it. Wiley's got it coming to him. You wanted a fight. You've got one. And we've just begun. And I think we're going to like it. Oh, I'm sorry. You're not trying to fool me, too, are you? You sure you're lost in the nut Dempsey? <laughs> Come on. You two battlers are going to be a great help.
like this And face the world together With dreams like this I know we could never go wrong Although the sky may not always be blue If you plan of action. I missed some of you in court today. Auntie told me what happened. But your buildings had been blown up and your ranch houses burned. Now first, we'll follow the original plan to assemble our cattle and drive them to water. They haven't enough men to keep us from driving the cattle through the pass. Once we get the herd moving, they'll never stop us. And when that's done, we'll give Whalen any kind of a fight he wants. Well, you think we won't? What do you sure, think about it?
finally got the stampede pretty well under control. Oh, Jerkins and Gregory will be dropping by. Oh, we've got to plan something else. I'm afraid the men want open warfare. But we can't. We don't want any more bloodshed, any more deaths. Come in. Hello, boy. Come on. Come on over and sit down. I knew we'd have to come to it. We'd have to drive them out by force. The miners, the guards, all of them. They'd only get more men, more miners, more guards. No, we've got to find a permanent way to end it. We've tried every decent way. There's nothing left for us. Give me one more chance. A day or two days. To find a solution that doesn't mean shooting and killing. You mean that you expect to do this? For a day or two. Sure. There's nothing to lose. And I'm sure she'll hit on some plan. I'm too tired to argue about it. But mark this. We'll end it by shooting it out with them. about what sort of a plan can be figured out. I'm afraid... At least we'll try. I wonder who that can be. Yes? I've come with an offer for your land. But it isn't for sale. It might be an opportune time. I'm authorized to offer you $50 an acre. Why, it's worth four times that much. Not now, Miss Martin. And later on, it might not be worth $10 an acre. Robert Whalen wants this property. I'm empowered to discuss the matter with you. It isn't for sale. Now or ever. Very well. Good morning, Miss Martin. Good morning. What do you think about that? Maybe you're getting under Mr. Whalen's skin. Maybe you'll soon find out what's really on his mind. Well, we can start figuring it out on our ride. stored up is for his hydraulic mining. But if it were only to be used for mining, the dam wouldn't be necessary. That's what puzzles me. Not only that, but he's mining at that operation at a loss. There's not enough ore left in those hills to pay for the refining. You can't be sure. In this case, I can. I've checked. made of a green, fertile valley. But I think it's that dust bowl he's created himself that he wants. But he's starting to buy now, if he can, at 25 cents on the dollar. Hydraulic mining from here? We could see it better from that level. You know, I have not.
A year ago, that valley to the right was almost a desert. Now the water from the mining drains into it. In another year, it will be irrigated into a fertile valley, while ours has become a dust bowl. Practically, the entire valley belongs to a big meatpacking syndicate. Then that's what Wayland's interested in. That's what's behind all his mysterious operations. He's gained control of that valley. Now he wants ours. By drying us out. He certainly set out to do a major operation. There's one little high spot he's overlooked. I think we'll perform the first major operation. You sound as though you found the plan. I have. Part of Dad's ranch. Now, behind that hill is Mr. Whalen's water basin, all nicely kept in place by the dammy belt. If part of that hill wasn't there, Mr. Whalen would find himself with a basin with a terrible leak in it. You mean blow that hill away? Well, if we didn't like the hill, there wouldn't be any crime in that wood there. And if the water came back into our valley through a new channel, we wouldn't exactly mind that either. I think we might even like it. <laughs> Men, Shirley's hit on it. We're going to blow that hill away. Hooray, hooray. <laughs> now I chop him up like tsunami. We'll need drills, dynamite, plenty of wire cable, and a detonator. We'll have plenty of them in the morning. Showing quite a respect for the law. Well, I... Notify the sheriff. There's a law against dynamiting without a permit. Right. Round up all the gang. I'm going out to the mine and get Barrett's crew. This is going to be a showdown. Then anything goes? Use your own judgment. to be blown to kingdoms come? Oh, it don't fit. This blow up? It's dynamite.
beautiful again since Waylon's men have gone. You know, it seems as though they'd never been here. Jill. Oh, the nightingales and meadowlarks have come home to their valley again. Why don't you say hello to them? Although the sky may not always be blue, if you believed in me, we would come smiling through. Our dreams would never miss in fair. 